Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video. My name is Juan Londoño and today's topic is the alienating nature of photography. Now this is not so much a how to or what to, so I'm going to call this a Photo Philosophy Friday topic. What do I mean by the alienating nature of photography? Well, different fields, if you study a little bit of psychology and you, and, and you watch some of the surveys they do, survey, surveys they do blah, 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 blah. Um, Many fields will draw different types of people. Um, and you can see this, right? So you look at a musician, for example, uh, especially when they end up on the stage, right? These are people that like attention, right? And they tend to be extroverted. Uh, not everybody can do that, let's face it, right? So photography is no different. Photography tends to attract introverts. If you look at many photographers, they are readers, they're writers, they're painters, uh, they like doing artistic things. But there's something interesting here too. Photography can also attract techies. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I am not an artist. I can't, I can barely draw stick figures, right? So, so, but I consider myself decent with a camera. So for me, it was the other way around. It was that I was always using the left brain, which is that logical sided, mathematical sided side. And you know, engineering student, and I was always good at, you know, math from a young age. So I think as a kind of like a relaxation point or a balance, um, I took up photography very, very seriously. And it was kind of that mental balance for me. You know, when I wasn't doing logical things like math and physics and chemistry and all that stuff, I could balance my brain and my body with something creative uh, that involved nature and walking and you know, so I took it very seriously and it was so soothing for me. So, you know, it draws introverts and, and I say it also draws techies. Well, many techies tend to be introverts. If you look at the IT field, I think something like 80% of the IT field um, is, in, you know, is, uh, is taken up by people that are introverted, that kind of like, you know, think about what they are, right? Programmers, uh, people that like sitting behind, you know, in a cube or at, at their desk at home for that matter, and just heads down programming, analyzing problems and, you know, things like that, right? Not so much involved with tons of people and giving, you know, speeches and conferences and all that. Even if you're not entirely, entirely introverted, but you're a little bit introverted and you, maybe you're balanced, uh, you tend to be in the middle. If you take up photography as a hobby or as a habit, depending how you look at it, if you take it up as a hobby, um, you're going to find yourself alone with yourself many times. And this is because if you think about it, not many people want to spend the day with you walking around in the gardens, right? I go out when I see, for example, that my wife and my daughter are busy and they have things to do on the weekend. For example, they want to go get their nails done and their hair done and all this stuff. I find that to be the perfect time to say, you know what, while you guys are doing that, I'm going to go to the gardens. By me, it's Gibbs Gardens here in North Georgia or the Botanical Gardens if I want to head south into the city in Atlanta. And, and I'll spend four hours easily, easily walking around with my camera, getting on my knees, shooting little flowers and all kinds of beautiful pictures that way because it just kind of grounds me, right? But what, what happens is I end up spending the day alone. So, because no matter who I call, my friends aren't going to really want to be hanging out with me doing that unless it's another photographer that wants to shoot flowers. If you look at extroverts that get into photography, many of them, and they do of course, many of them are end up being photographers that love to work with tons of people. So they do corporate events. Uh, those are the ones that walk into companies and do the headshots for you know the VPs. They don't mind that tension and that extra stress. and. Weddings is another one that they get into, but I know a lot of shy people that do weddings because you can kind of hide behind your camera and as long as you're able to guide people and, and kind of position them and, you know, pose them, um, you don't have to be extremely extroverted. But extroverts that get into photography do get into those, you know, uh, product photography that involves going to corporations and setting up, you know, your lights and doing, working with people, right? Um, most photographers, I would easily say at least 80% if you want to follow the Pareto principle, at least 80% of the photographers are probably introverted and won't get into that type of photography. But somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do that type of photography. So extroverts are needed in photography as well. But my point here of this video is that 
what it's called the alienating nature of photography is because if you get into photography and you are serious about it, it's going to pull you away from people a bit. And we'll get into that in a second. Right now, what I want to what I want to go back to is we were talking about extroverts shooting, you know, certain types of photography. Well, what do introverts typically tend to shoot? Well, like I said, they do weddings as well and they do portraits because that's a one on one with people and that's it tends to be a little more calming and quiet, right? Uh, you can still be introverted and feel comfortable in that environment, but they tend to do a lot of artistic stuff, right? So smoke photography, water droplets, nudes, right? Like I do nudes. I tend to be more introverted than I am extroverted. I don't know that you would know that from a person having a YouTube channel. <clears throat> Many people that know me say, no way, there's no way you can be introverted. Well, you know, I think the definition is if you recharge your batteries by being around a lot of people, and I know people like this, they have to be around tons of people and they and their energy level goes way up, then you're definitely an extrovert. And if you recharge your batteries by being quiet and having some downtime, then you're definitely an introvert. And I definitely charge my batteries by being alone, by being in my office back here that you're seeing back there, uh, whether it's reading or researching something on a computer or writing. I love all that stuff. It gives me tons of energy so that I can go into big groups of people and do things, right? For me, it's the opposite. Whereas an extrovert will be in, in a huge group of people, their energy will build up and that gives them the energy they need to then be alone because they hate being alone, right? Sitting in an office back there, reading or writing, that's something that they're going to need energy for and they get that energy from being around people. Before we go on, it's water break time. You know that I forget in some of the videos, I drink the water all through the video, but I forget to talk about it. So. I'm not going to forget to talk about it now. Yummy, yummy. Go get your water, stay healthy, and come right back. So back to the thing that I said I was going to talk about later. I mentioned the point and said, if you get into photography, you're going to find yourself being pulled away from people because uh, you're going to end up working alone a lot, right? And, and I gave you the example, like my friends don't want to go, I mean, it's not their fault, right? It's not, it has nothing to do with them being bad friends. You know, I've called friends at times and said, hey, I'm going to go to the you know, park to shoot, whatever. Everybody's busy. Everybody has things to do, right? So you do things that are important to you. Um, and you've read it before in books and you've heard it. We have to learn to say no. And that's what they're doing. They're learning to say no. Because if they're busy that day, the first thing they ask is, what time are you leaving and how long are you going to be there? And I'll say, well, I'm leaving around 8.30 because I want to be there right after they open at 9. And I'm probably going to be there for about three or four hours. And they'll be honest and say, man, I can't. I'm doing a bunch of stuff to the house. Uh, I'm going to be busy this weekend. So, And I say, I understand because that's what I was doing last weekend. And that's what I'm probably going to do next weekend. So completely understand. It's important to learn to say no. And I actually admire that and respect that. So back to the boy that you're going to end up being alone. So people say, no, well, that's not true because I can join a photography group. Yeah, I've done that too. And what you do in a photography group is you all pick a place and you go shoot together. And what happens when you get there? Everybody goes their own way. And I didn't even get there with anybody. I drove there myself. So I drove there myself. We all met. This is at the Oakland Cemetery here in Atlanta. We all met as photographers. Uh, we met with the people from the cemetery. They gave us the rules and guidelines, and then we took off. And at first, we kind of all headed in the same direction, and we all shared some comments and talked about how pretty it was there and blah, blah, blah. And then we just kept spreading and spreading and spreading. And within 30 minutes, you know, I don't know where anybody was. I was shooting what I wanted to shoot, and I was very happy. At heart, we're still introverts. Even if we're surrounded by other people and other photographers, we're still introverts which means we end up going our own way. The other part of that as a photographer is that I don't want to shoot what everybody else is shooting, right? So yeah, I may go that way and they may go this way and I'm going to work my way around and I'm going to end up over there and they're going to end up over here, but we're not doing it together. So I don't know what they're shooting, what angle they're shooting. When I get to that side of the cemetery, I find my own things to shoot and I'm looking for my own creative angles and shooting through flowers and bushes and gra grass blades and things like that, right? Uh, and when they get to that side, they can do their own creative thing. I find much more pleasure in that. So that's another reason why people break up and why you don't end up in little groups, right? 
Now, when you're walking through cities and you join a photography group and you do like a city shoot, yes, then you kind of all walk down, you know, the city streets. But what I recommend you do there for more creativity is that you all agree as a group. This is where we're starting. We're going to cover these, let's say, these 10 square blocks. Everybody can go off their own way, shoot whatever they want, and we'll meet here in three hours, right? That's a little more creative than 10 people walking in a bunch and, ooh, I love that reflection on the window. And then five other cameras point at the same window and shoot the same picture. Mm -hmm. eh, you know, it doesn't do it for me, but, um, but everybody's different, right? But because it doesn't do it for me, that's another reason why I say that being in these groups doesn't mean that you're going to be surrounded by people all the time. Because once I get there, I kind of just break my own way and break out my own way and, and go my own direction, take my own pictures. And I always say, I'm going to be here. I'll meet you guys at such and such, and such time, which is why it's good to travel alone too, because God forbid, you know, everybody left already or, or they're not even there yet. They're still taking pictures and you've got to get home because you've got to do something. Then you hop in your car and you get out, but you've got really nice pictures. You started the day with a nice group of people. What we normally do is we start at breakfast or at lunch, depending on the time of the day uh, or dinner, right? Um, we start as a group together. We chat, we joke, we talk about our equipment, we talk about what we're doing, we get to the site and then we all break away. We shoot our photography. We meet up at the end of the day. If we want to go grab drinks later, that's fine. So it is a way of keeping friendships and meeting people. And But when you're shooting, you're still alone. Anyone can enjoy photography, introverts, extroverts, middle ground, right? I think the beautiful nature of any artistic field is that we can approach it from our own angle and, you know, inject into it our own creativity and our own desires and wishes. So that's the beauty of photography in any other artistic field. We basically do with it as we please. Before we come to the conclusion, two things. One is that, you know, the opposite is also true, right? If you're going through kind of, I'm not going to say depression, but yeah, that's valid. Depression is, is also valid. If you're going through a depression, if you're going through just, just kind of those moments in life when you're down and you want to be around people, maybe you just had a breakup and you want to, you want to start socializing again, right? You've already been through the, through the phase where you just want to be alone and you want to be under the sheets eating ice cream and crying. Uh, or, you know, watching TV and just mm, don't want to hear from anybody, right? We all go through that in a breakup. It's those first initial, it could be weeks or months, right? It depends. Uh, for some people, days. Um, but when you get over that, you start to say, okay, I'm ready to socialize. I'm ready. You know, you don't want to be alone. You don't want to grab a camera and go to the hills after all this time and continue to be alone. You want to start meeting people, right? So this is also true. If you're in that phase of your life where you're ready to start meeting people, maybe focusing on photography at the moment is not the right thing to do. Now, can you still do it? Yeah, of course, right? I'm not going to say put your camera away for five months while you socialize and then pick it up again. No, you know, but what I'm saying is don't spend all of your time shooting pictures because it's going to pull you away from people, right? Um, yeah, of course. You might want that mental relaxation, go to the hills, go to the gardens, go to the city, shoot pictures. Um, you can do all kinds of cool things, right? Take a trip with a friend, right? And you can still shoot some pictures. But maybe that's the best way to do it, right? Take a trip with a friend. Uh, but my point here is focus on socializing, right? If you're going through that depressive kind of state where you're kind of getting out of that and you want to socialize and come back to normalcy, then then start socializing, start meeting people, start calling friends that you haven't spoken to in a while, uh, start making appointments to go grab a drink or go grab dinner or lunch, invite people over, have a movie night, right? Um, so I just wanted to point that out because the opposite is also true, right? Photography will, will pull you away, as we mentioned, and it tends to be an introverted field. So if, you, if you're going through that phase and you're just focused on photography and you're in love with your camera and that's all you're doing, it'll please one side of you, but it's, it's going to leave the other side of you empty. So make sure you get plenty of friendships and smiles and laughter and good memories because you need to build those good memories too. We got to have stories to tell when we get old. The other thing I want to mention real quick is please like the video. If this was, you know, something you enjoyed, subscribe down below and so that the channel can keep growing because then we can start 
actually getting a little more serious about what we present because then people will start sending things for me to review, right? Because I'm such a small channel still, you know, nobody takes me serious when it comes to that stuff, right? So I'm trying to get to the point where I'm getting enough things that I can review and share with you. And then it becomes an even more useful channel for you. So as a conclusion, you can get into photography no matter whether you're introverted or extroverted. It doesn't really matter. But what you will notice is that many of the people in photography will tend to be more introverted than extroverted. And it doesn't matter which category you fall into, whether you're extroverted or introverted. The more time you spend in photography, the more time you're going to spend with yourself. And if you love photography enough, you'll probably shoot in every genre, right? Because you're going to want to try weddings. I did that for a while. I got curious and I ended up just jumping into weddings, shot over 100 weddings. Uh, then I got burned out with weddings, but did a lot of portraiture stuff. I, I still love portraiture, by the way. Um, like I mentioned, black and white nudes, right? I, I, I do that. Um, sports, action photography, nature, birds, right? As a photographer, if you start really enjoying photography, you're going to, you're going to want to play with different aspects of photography. And it's an excuse to buy different lenses because every lens doesn't work for every genre. So if you want that bird photography, then you're going to have to buy a really big telephoto zoom lens or something like that, uh, or prime. If you, if you're shooting, you know, uh, landscapes and you weren't doing that before, you're going to need a really wide 18 millimeter or 24 millimeter. And maybe you didn't have that. So it doesn't matter what you fall under. If you like photography enough, you're going to do it all. And whether you're introverted or extroverted, you're still going to enjoy it. So I leave you with those thoughts. Love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Please take care of yourselves so that we can keep meeting here every week. And until the next video, ciao for now.